So good morning. Uh, Ms. Lee, I'd like to start with you if that's okay. So Ms. Lee, I understand you're 21 years of age, is that correct? I'm now 22. Now 22. And at the time of the events in question, being January and February of this year, you were 21? Correct. All right. And you said already you're a public servant. You work for the Government of Canada? Yes, that's correct. And you worked for the Government of Canada during the protest period. Is that fair? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And what do you do for your employment for the Government of Canada? I'm a data analyst. And with which ministry or uh, department are you with? Uh, objection. Uh, what's the relevance of this line of question, Commissioner? I'm not sure it's relevant or not, but uh, is it, it seems to me that it's uh, not a not unreasonable. Well, I personally don't feel there's. Um, I the actions I took was in my capacity as an individual citizen of Ottawa and not related to my work or any other activities. Right, I understand that, but what department were you with and what were you doing for work for the Government of Canada at the time? I was a data analyst with Shared Services Canada. Shared Services Canada? Correct. Okay, and what ministry does that come under? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I understand that you know Ottawa City Councillor Catherine McKenney, is that correct? Correct. All right, and I also understand that you know NDP Member of Provincial Parliament for Ottawa Centre, Joel Harden, is that correct? Correct. And from some public articles, I also understand that you were introduced to lawyer Mr. Paul Champ sometime between January 28th, 2022 and February 4th, 2022, is that correct? Could you repeat the dates, please? January 28th, 2022 and February 4th, 2022. Mm, correct. Okay. And what date were you introduced to Mr. Champ? Uh, I believe it was, it was, it was a Friday, so whichever date that Friday fell on. Okay. And so someone introduced you to Mr. Champ, correct? Um, Mr. Champ had reached out to me. Okay, and is it not true that it was Ottawa City Councillor Catherine McKenney who put you in touch with Mr. Champ? That is untrue. Okay, and I understand that you were the recent co-chair of the 2002 Leaders Summit for Action Chinese Canadians Together, is that correct? That's correct. And as part of that summit, I understand you gave a video statement uh, about how you became who you are today. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And. It focused on the protests in Ottawa and became and becoming the lead plaintiff in the class action that you filed. Is that right? Correct. And there you describe becoming the lead plaintiff in the class action as a fateful and surreal story. Is that right? Correct. And you said there you had the opportunity to make a difference, right? Correct. And you said that the lawyers needed a plaintiff. Correct. Right. Uh, and so you were asked to be the lead plaintiff. Is that fair? Correct. Right. And was there any other else other than Mr. Champ who was asking you to be the lead plaintiff? Uh, Emily Tamman, who works with Paul Champ. All right. And so Mr. Champ reached out to you randomly. How did Mr. Champ get in touch with you? It was as a result of the meeting I had organized with the Ottawa police. Um, one of my fellow residents and neighbor was a lawyer who was aware of the action being taken. Okay. And so I just want to take you back as well to that speech you gave with the uh, Leaders Summit for Action for Chinese Canadians together. Uh, just let me know if this is correct, what you said. This is how you described the protest. Uh, it was insane. It was the strangest Twilight Zone purge scenario where people weren't quite purging, but the opportunity was there uh, because there was just no laws being enforced. So it was this crazy, crazy thing with hot tubs, with right-wing extremists, and then right-wing moderates as well. And then you just, your confused average grandmother saying, oh, isn't this really a great time? I wonder what the air raid sirens are for. Those are your statements, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and when you say purge scenario for the folks at home, as well as anybody here, uh, I take it you're referring to the film series, The Purge, right? Yes, just in reference to the lack of laws that were in place. Right, and it was your belief that the protest provided a purge opportunity, is that fair? Uh, 
I would not say that the protest or occupation provided a purge opportunity, but the what I witnessed on the streets day to day was very reminiscent of that kind of lawless world where open fires were being held, laws were being broken in front of police officers who were not doing anything to combat them, and just a general sense and lack of disregard for public areas and pe really the people that lived there. Okay. But again, you said earlier and you admitted that you stated it was the strangest twilight zone purge scenario where people weren't quite purging, but the opportunity was there, correct? Yes. Right. So you believe that the opportunity was there for a purge type scenario. Is that right? I believe the opportunity was there and it was an environment where these people who had been illegally occupying our streets felt that they had the I don't know if this is the right word. They had the ability to do anything they wanted as they were not privy to the regulations that the rest of us members of society were. And I came to this conclusion in, through my witnessing of these crimes being committed, because really they were crimes. And even speaking with these individuals directly who had informed me that they were not going to face any consequences because they were protected. Okay. So in the movie, The Purge, uh, you agree that it's about that for one day in the United States, called The Purge, that there are no laws in force and the population can commit murder, which is The Purge. Is that right? That is correct, but I was not referencing the entirety of The Purge. It was a purge-like scenario where laws were not enforced specifically. And a purge opportunity was available. Yes, because laws were not being enforced. Right. So people could potentially commit murder. That was your concern. I did not make that statement. All right. And you then, I understand from your evidence that you provided to the commission prior from your statement, I understand that uh, you started to hear honking on Friday, January 28th, right? Or January uh, 28th, 2022. Correct. All right. And when you provided the statement to the commission, did you provide it yourself? Yes. They interviewed you? Yes. Okay, thank you. And I understand that you obtained the injunction on February 5th, 2022. I think it's February 4th. February 4th, 2022, you obtained the injunction to stop the honking, is that right? Pardon me, the 7th, pardon me, February 7th. And well, the there injunction was, was obtained and uh, approved by the court on the 7th. Well, I understand there was an interim injunction approved for first two days, and then on the 7th it was approved. Is that the correct facts or would- Mr. No, Cap that is like not that? correct. Uh, two days prior to the injunction being put in place, there was a deferral of the trial to that date where the injunction was eventually approved. Trial, you said trial, I just wanna clarify for the record. There was no trial, it was an application, correct? Application, sorry, I'm not well versed in law. I'm not a law student. I understand. Um, and then after you obtained the injunction, I understand that things got a little bit better, right? Uh, for a brief period, shortly after the injunction, there was a clear silence from the noise that was previously constant. Um, shortly thereafter, there was a gradual ramp up in the honking again, but however, it was more strategic and intermittent than it was previously, whereas it was constant. Okay, and so you said you gave your statement to the commission before you testified here today, right? Yes. And when you gave your statement, you knew you had to be truthful? Yes. And when you gave that statement, of course, you wanted to include all important observations and interactions that you had with the protesters, is that right? Uh, I just want to clarify the statement being in, in, in reference, is that? Sorry, I should clarify. Um, she gave an uh, anticipated, uh, anticipated statement, so it's an, a statement of anticipated evidence, not a witness statement. Um, so it's, it's, not, um, it's not attributable to her, it's attributable to the commission, and that is different from a witness statement, which is attributable to the witness. Right. So I just want to clarify that. Sure. And so when you provided the commission your statement, I take it that you would have told them all the important information that you wanted them to know? Uh, as far as I was aware, yes, to right. the best of my ability. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Commissioner. Um, I, I do want to interject here. Our rules provide that there can be no examination uh, on a statement of anticipated evidence without leave, um, and, I, I, and I think leave needs to be sought if there's going to be questions about that. Okay, I won't put the statement to her. I'll move on. 
I, I understand that you notice the honking generally stop after the injunction was granted, though some trucks still honk intermittently for short periods of time. Is that right? Correct. All right. And so that's what happened after the injunction. Is that correct? Uh, to the best of my recollection, correct. That was the immediate aftermath. All right. Now, between January 28th and February 5th, 2022, did you attend your employment at the Government of Canada? I was working from home, though I struggled to maintain productivity due to the disturbances that were taking place. Right. And at the Government of Canada, I take it that you are on salary. Is that fair? That is correct. So between January 28th, 2022 and February 5th, 2022, you did not lose any income. Is that fair? Uh, that would be correct. There was a leave code that was applied for government employees that were affected by the situation. Okay. And, but prior to the situation as well, you were working from home. Wasn't that also under the general COVID policy for all Government of Canada employees? Could you clarify the question, please? So prior, weren't you working from home prior to January 28th, 2022 anyway? Yes. Okay. And how long were you working from home from? I had started a new position on January 10th with Shared Services Canada. Prior to that, I was employed working from home with another agency. Okay. And what agency were you employed with before? I was employed with this Canada Revenue Agency. Okay. Canada Revenue Agency. And so from January 28th, 2022 and before, you were already working at home? Correct. Okay. Thank you. And moving on from... Uh, sort of your background with uh, working from home, uh, I understand that uh, you had the interactions with the protesters and you confronted them on Kent Street. Is that correct? Correct. Right. And when you confronted those protesters, do you remember saying to them, which was recorded, go back to where the fuck you are from? I may have said that. Okay. And... I take it that you never saw any of the, or never said to the commission or saw any protesters or truckers physically harm anyone, is that right? There was only the, um, I would describe it as Im intimidation with a truck. Okay, and you never said to the commission and nothing in uh, that regard with respect to uh, seeing protesters or truckers threatening to physically harm anyone either, did you? I did not make that statement. All right. And you didn't say to the commission or see anything in your observations that could be classified as espionage or sabotage? I'm sorry? You didn't see anything that could be classified as espionage or sabotage? Uh, no. Thank you. And you didn't say to the commission or uh, observe any of the protesters or truckers destroy or light a fire any buildings or anything like that? Not inside of any buildings, no, just outside. Outside. So you're saying that they were destroying the outside of buildings. I did right? not say that. I said they were lighting fires outside of buildings, as in the bonfires that were all over the city. Right. But they weren't trying to knock down any form of buildings or property or anything like that. I can't comment to their intentions. Well, I understand their intentions, but uh, I submit you didn't see them do anything like that. Nope. I just saw the fires, right. open fires. Great. And you didn't see them try to destroy any other trucks or vehicles or light them afire or anything? I did not. Thank you. And so I just want to talk to you a little bit about that class action as well. Uh, so you became the lead plaintiff on February 4th when it was filed, correct? Correct. All right. And as of today, I understand there are only three other additional plaintiffs to that action. Is that right? Correct. And the first one is Happy Goat Coffee Company. Is that correct? Correct. And Happy Goat Coffee Company is a chain of coffee shops that has three coffee shops in the downtown area. Is that fair? Uh, as far as I know, correct. Thank you. And the second plaintiff is uh, that got added is a numbered company, but it operates as Union Local 613, and I understand that's a restaurant and bar on Somerset Street. Is that correct. right? All right. And the third plaintiff is a fellow by the name of Jeffrey Devani. Is that right? Correct. And he's a bartender and server at a restaurant in Byward Market. Uh, my understanding is that he was employed in the Byward Market. Okay. And that he doesn't live in downtown Ottawa, though? Yes. Okay. And so after you got the injunction on uh, February 5th, uh, I understand that both yourself and Mr. Champ uh, began to offer the protesters and truckers an agreement that they could sign to be released from your class action if they agreed to leave. Do you remember that? I would like to clarify that the injunction was granted on the 7th. Okay, but after the, on the beginning of the 5th as well, as I understand, you began to offer this release to the protesters and truckers. Is that right? Uh, correct. All right. And so who was it that you had going out handing out copies of this release to the truckers? Do you remember? I am not aware of that information.
Okay, did you, did you know that Councillor McKenney was handing them out for you? Now I do. Okay, and now you do for me telling you or did you know before this? Well, it was a lot of events and I think it was mentioned that McKenney was out doing this. However, um, I was not directly involved other than agreeing to offer this agreement. Okay, and I understand also that you know uh, the NDP member of Provincial Parliament for Ottawa, Senator Joel Harden. Do you know him? Yes. Right, and he was contacting people and organizing events to raise money for your lawsuit. Do you remember that? Yes, correct. Okay. And was it not the Ottawa City Councillor, Katha McKenney, an NDP member of Provincial Parliament for Ottawa, Senator Joel Harden, who supported you and put you forward for that claim? Is that not correct? That is not correct. I'm... I've stated that that was not true previously as well. Right. And so I just want to bring you to sort of another statement that you had said when you were at the uh, Leaders' Summit for Action for Chinese Canadians. Uh, I would also like to clarify that the Leaders' Summit has not occurred. Right. But you gave a video. Yes, correct. Right. So can you agree to me, agree with me that you stated the following? Uh, it came about that the lawyers needed a lead plaintiff to stand up and speak about what was going on and really try to make a difference because we weren't seeing any change in our community, which was not acceptable for anybody. And but being a Chinese Canadian, it is a bit of an odd role to play because it's not something that is really necessarily supported or common within our culture. But I really saw the need for somebody, anybody to stand up and speak for the people and help us out of the situation we were in and the stars really aligned and here I am. Yes, that's true. Thank you. Uh, those are my questions for uh, you, Ms. Lee, and then I just have a few uh, for Ms. Uh, Lalonde. Uh, before you continue, would it be all right to clarify my relationship with Joel Harden and Catherine McKenney? No? If okay. Judge, if uh, His Honor would like, that's fine. There will be a, a brief uh, opportunity to re-examine yeah. at the end. So. so Ms. Lalonde, good morning. Good morning. So, Ms. Lund, I understand just from your background, uh, and I'm not trying to, to poke or anything of that, but uh, I, I understand you were born around 1947 in Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. Is that correct? Uh, I was born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, but grew up in Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan, and you've asked women their ages. So. I won't, I won't, I'm not going to. I promise not to do that. They can do the math. Yes, all right. And, um, and I, I don't want to get into too much with your disability, and I'm, I'm very sorry uh, mm. for the struggles that you've had, particularly during the convoy and mm. protest. But I understand that about 1961 is when you began to lose your sight. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And despite that, you, you thrived... Uh, you obtained a bachelor degree in psychology from the University of Saskatchewan in 1974? That's right, yes. Right, and you completed your law degree at the University of Saskatchewan in 1984? Uh, 1983. 83. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, you completed your master's of laws at the London School of Economics. Is that correct? Yes. Right. And how many jurisdictions are you a member of the bar and or a member of uh, uh, the solicitors group? Um, I was a member in good standing with the Ontario Bar and the New York Bar, of, but recently I um, resigned my membership from the Ontario Bar. I'm, okay. still, I'm still active as a, non um, uh, a retired member of the New York Bar, but I'm still licensed. Right, and I understand that uh, after becoming a member of the bar, you began to work for the government of Canada, is that correct? Yes. Right, and you spent 10 years with the Department of Indian and Northern Affairs Canada, is that correct? It was more like uh, 25 years. I'm just, just let me recorrect that. It was from 1990, September 1990 to April uh, 2011. Okay, and uh, then you were also with the Department of Veteran Affairs Canada, is that right? Yes. Okay, and around that, uh, in the 80s, you also incorporated a company called De La Ronde International Inc., is that right? That's correct. And that company is still in operation? Yes. And is that company not a federal government contractor? No. No, it, but it does do government contracts and assists with, uh, I believe, uh, a lot of First Nations work, is that right? 
It could, yes. Right. And you worked as a lawyer for the government of Canada, is that right? No, I was uh, working on the policy side of the picture. I was not a justice lawyer with the government of Canada. I was a, a, an executive. Okay, and I don't know the answer to this, and I'm, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do you, can you mind telling uh, the folks what uh, brought about your participation in this commission? I had a phone call from the commission, from commission solicitor, asking my permission. Uh, to, first of all, have a conversation about my experience and then asking my permission if my name could be put forward as a potential witness in this commission. Okay. Thank you very much. Those are all my questions for both of you, and have a good morning. Thank you. You too.